Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus Nine from IGS Electronics, and today we're going to be doing or checking out Teco L510S drive, which is their latest release. Well, I think it is their latest release. I haven't seen anything uh, newer. So we are going to be doing again a three-part video on it, where we're going to be doing the first one. We're going to be setting up the drive in local run and do the commissioning and bits and pieces like that. Getting familiar with the menu and all the terminals and things like that. Second video, we're going to start diving deeper with the remote control for two, three wire control, and also be using the potentiometer. And in the third video, again, we're going to go even a bit more deeper, setting up the drive into multi frequency control, and we are going to be doing a MOP speed control which is going to be using two buttons to control speed to go up and speed to go down all related videos manuals and everything else that i think or believe could benefit you in any way definitely check that out in description below so without further ado let's get started <music> Okay, all wired in, and <coughs> first thing I noticed is this, this, this flashing thing, it's quite interesting, I've never seen drives do that before, so it's just like showing down here, it's a forward thing, uh, flashing, so pretty much I presume that's showing you that it's going forwards, so it's just interesting, but anyway, as usual, we're going to start with a, um, a connector block, so all the connections uh, that is it is here, and the first one you can look at is where your line goes in, this is down here in the bottom, where you will uh, L1 and L2, and there you got the uh, L3, so L1 will be for your phase and L3 is going to be for your neutral if you are using a single phase. And obviously L1, L2, L3 will be your for your three phase if you're using three phases. And over Earth down here in the bottom, and then you have a T1, T2, T3, they are going to be the wires that are going to be going to your motor. So the next what we're going to have a look at is obviously the front terminals, which are one thing I like about it. We've got a five inputs that are all configurable and we're going to be playing with that quite a lot in upcoming videos uh, RA, RB, those are going to be relay outputs 24 volt in here, that's going to be for your source to uh, power up all the inputs and in here you have uh, all this section in here from 10 volts all the way to the ground those are dedicated for your uh, IOs regarding your, um, uh, analog input and output so uh, regarding that, that's that's all the connections down there, uh, all the connection points down there when it comes down to wiring and you got a uh, uh, RJ485 I think it's called for RJ485 yeah, RJ which one you can connect to the laptop we're probably going to look into that in the future at uh, their uh, software but not uh, not anytime soon so uh, the next uh, front keypad you got a little bit of potentiometer in there and that's pretty much all it does it controls your frequency from a local run it's quite a nice addition i like when drives do have that then you got a run and uh, stop uh, button and then obviously the menu and to get in the menu you have to click the mode once you are in the mode so uh you uh, this enter button now it's got a little arrow in here and it's sort of a uh, uh, if you go in a uh, across like if you go to this number there is a uh, 13 groups inside the menu each group represents uh, something uh, different so uh basically it's quite easily to jump in between all the all the all the groups once you select the group you're going to be in let's say the group zero you click enter again it goes across one more time and then you click enter again and then then you can get start have a look inside what's inside that group so let's see how many parameters is in this one 20 so there's like 20 parameters in the zero zero group very similar that uh, to uh, Yaskawa, so uh, it's, it's it's I like when they segregate the groups like that. It's 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 quite quite uh, straightforward to to get your head around it. And also, if you want to enter the menu, you have to hold enter, and then it's going to enter into it, and then you can change the values, whatever you want to change. And then you have to hold it, and until you see the end, that means you have saved the parameter, and it will exit automatically. And if you want to return back to your uh, uh, home screen. Just click until you see three flashing zeros. So that's pretty much when it comes down to terminals. A little explanation with the menu, how to get your hand, uh, head around the menu. And the next thing we're going to do, as always usual, we are going to do factory reset. And for the factory, <coughs> sorry, for the factory reset, we need to go to the parameter code 1308. As you can see, oh, gone too close. 1308, you sort of need to select the group that which represents you the most. So, whatever, depending which country you are in. 
Hi, we are here in the RD in the UK on our single phase supply is around about 230 volts. So we're going to be using this initialization number 1250 and we are going to be doing that. But if you look at your, depending where you are in the world, it's like uh, somewhere, I don't know, uh, somewhere where you have, if your voltage, single voltage is close to 220 volts, then uh, you will choose, uh, choose this group and sort of, uh, you sort of gives you a gist to try to get as close as you can to whatever the voltage you are. Uh, in and based in what country you are in and we are here in the UK that our voltage single phase uh, voltage are at 230 volts So we are going to be going for initialization of 1250. So again, let's enter the mode go across go to the group 13 Enter enter and then we are need to go to 8 And uh, oh yeah, hold it now you are in, so you pretty much need to enter uh, the one uh, zero. I'm gonna go backwards, so it's gonna be zero five two one. So it's gonna be zero. Thank you. It's gonna be five. Thank you. Two. And one. And then just hold enter. Here we go. It has a fully reset your drive to the initialization what you selected. In my case, that is 50 hertz. 230 volts slash 400 volts here in UK. Next, to get your motor going, we need to, uh, well, the drive going, we need to enter all the motor data into the drive. So, drive pretty much knows what it's uh, looking for. And there's only a few things that you need to enter to really get yourself going. And first one we're going to be looking at is entry. we need to enter a motor rated current. But the first one in here, this is the this is what they use for slip uh, compensation calculation. Uh, we're not going to be doing that, but in case your drive is uh, uh, significantly bigger like mine, not well, like significantly, but no, a little bit bigger like mine. So you need to make sure that this current in the, in this parameter is below your uh, motor uh, current. So make sure that is uh, that. So uh, done and done that. So that this, so in uh, the, uh, zero two zero one, this is where you will enter your motor current. And as you can see, my motor current is one amp, four point eighteen kilowatt motor. So we've done that. So the next one up will be a. Uh, well, we don't need to do that. So the, the third one is going to be motor rated speed. My one is in thirteen ninety five. So make sure uh, you find that information on your motor plate as well. It's called RPM. So I've done that. Next one up will be your a motor rated voltage. Make sure you check out, make sure it's, it's a equal to what is on data plate. In my case, it's 230 volts. Now, and next one up will be a uh, motor rated power, which in my case is 0.18 kilowatt, which for this drive would be 0.2. I've done that. And the next one up will be double check, make sure the motor rated frequency, which from initialization should be set at 50 anyway so that is there already so that's done that and the next one up will be your auto tune it's pretty much it gives him uh, he uses the auto tune to read more uh, data uh, from the motor itself and enters it in a following parameters uh, afterwards so uh, all you do 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 that click one and then just save it and there we go the motor will start doing his business as you, I'm sure you can hear that there's a little noise going on and there we go as soon as you receive and he has done his auto tune and entered all the necessary parameters what he needed from that a tune so having done that pretty much this is it you are pretty much ready to go so next thing up we need to check out how to get this thing going from local run and to run the drive from a local run, we sort of need to uh, change the run sources. So uh, where the where is going to be reading the frequency from, and where is going to be reading the start stop control from. And to do that, we need to go to parameter group zero. Uh, go to zero, and uh, then we need to go to parameter for the main run source. Is the parameter zero two? Enter it. And in there, the, by, by default, it stands on external run stop control. So we need to change that to zero. So it reads that information from keypad. Here we go, we've done that. So next one, we need to uh, change the, where it's going to be reading frequency from. And we want this guy to be the main one where he does that from. So that will be in a parameter five. 
and we are going to need to change that to zero as well so that is a uh, not zero lying is to one which is potentiometer on keypad so we change that to one and that is it so now as you can see my potentiometer now is visible and it reads the information uh, from the front potentiometer uh, from, from, from the pump, uh, front potentiometer. The next thing it left to do is let's check it out how it runs. So we put it in the run mode. It's switching frequency is pretty good. It's a fairly quiet. There we go. Obviously the deacceleration. So uh, let's uh, check out where is our deacceleration. That's going to be on uh, 14 and 15. Come on, stop it up, and uh, let's uh, let's go to mode. Let's go to fourteen. Let's reduce that down to one second, as usual. My favorite for the videos is one second. Come on. Could have done this a little quicker. Okay, that's that. And fifteen, we're gonna. Oh, and I'm gonna do the. Mm, like that. So enter that one. So here we go. So we change that. So uh, and then we run it. There we go. Runs good. All right, that switch frequency is pretty good as uh, from the default. So uh, it's good. It's good uh, noise level and things like that. So that will do for a, a local run and motor commissioning so hopefully that gets you going and uh, get, you, get you where you want to be and in the next video we're going to be looking at to run this drive in remote control and the first station we're going to be using a two-wire control we can definitely check out three-wire control as well so definitely get tuned a uh, tune in for that so other than that ladies and gentlemen if you like that video please smash that like if you didn't smash the dislike comment below any questions and uh and any suggestions and, uh, and things like that whatever you want to comment uh, in, in the, the, the description below definitely do so and i'll answer them as soon as i can and obviously as accurate as i can other than that thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video